Good morning to everybody. Uh, I have the pleasure today to introduce you to Dr. Samar Mohamed Adher, Senior Researcher at the Bayon Engineering Systems Department at the Agriculture Engineering Research Institute in Giza, Egypt, institute that is part of the Agriculture Research Center of Egypt. Samar is here today in the frame of the program uh, Ellas Investigan or Women Inside that was launched in 2014 for supporting African female researchers uh, in the, to be leaders in the, in the world of science. Among other things, this program facilitates the visits for six months in research institutes of excellence like us. <laughs> in 2019, it was the first time that our institute participated in this program and it is in this frame that Samar is here today. Thanks to an agreement between the SIC and the Foundation of Women for Science. The work of Samar is focused on improving on-farm water productivity, in particular using of models and data analysis methods and tools to develop better decision support systems to manage irrigation. And for the last month, she has been collaborating with Dr. Jimenez Berni on the application of thermography in improving deficit irrigation management. It was really unfortunate that she arrived just at the start of March, so not an easy time. Nevertheless, she managed to do quite a bit of field work, and it's this that she will present to us today. For the question, Dr. Jimenez Berni, he will also join with her for, for the answer to our comments and questions. With this, please, Amar, the floor is yours. You need to unmute your. The high Okay. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, really glad to be with you today uh, uh, to present some, say, some brief presentation about uh, the importance of precision agriculture in Egypt. Um, Okay. Very nice. No. Okay. Um, well, today I would like to just uh, uh, take you in a quick tour to to the topic of precision irrigation and what's the importance of this topic for uh, the agriculture in Egypt. So I. Um, First of all, I would like to introduce to, for you what is uh, my institute. Uh, the Agricultural Engineering Research Institute is one of the uh, institutes of uh, agricultural research centers, uh, which is um, a governmental agency and uh, the research and development component of uh, Ministry of, Agri of Agriculture. It's um, we have an objectives uh, of uh, 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 the general aim of the ARC is optimizing the agricultural productivity and reducing the production inputs. And also we have uh, a mandate in uh, technology transfer and extension activities. Um, uh, my institute, the Agricultural Engineering Research uh, uh, Institute is um, established uh, in uh, 1977 and it's one of the 20, uh, uh, of, uh, 28 uh, uh, institutes under the umbrella of ARC. Um, uh, our objectives are uh, uh, in the alignment with the, the general goal of the ARC and we um, actually my work is uh, in under the work of improving on farm irrigation practices uh, and uh, improve the water productivity. 
sorry. Uh, before we start to talk about the precision irrigation, I would like just to introduce to you the uh, agriculture sector in Egypt. Um, in Egypt, we have about 90%, as it, it seems here in the map, that we have 90% of the Egyptian territory area is a desert, completely desert. And we have here this follow this narrow strait with the River Nile, and we have uh, the, uh, the bank of the River Nile that is the most inhabitant area of the, the of the Egypt that have about 90% of the, the the population and of the whole agricultural activities and the other economical activities. Uh, the total area, agricultural area in, in the, for whole Egypt is about uh, 3 uh, million and uh, 3.7 million hectares. And uh, about the most of this area are exists in, in this narrow strip actually. Uh, we tried in the, from the, the 80s of uh, the 20th century to increase uh, the agricultural area of Egypt by reclaiming new lands. That's why we have this expression right now. We have the expression of old land that uh, uh, representing about uh, uh, 68 uh, percent of the total agricultural area and new lands, which is representing about 38 percent. And uh, this is according to the recent uh, uh, statistics. Uh, the two systems are very different between them uh, from the characteristics of uh, the, the crops, cultivated crops, the uh, applied uh, technologies and uh, the problems, the type of problems and the needs. But the majority of, is of the lands that we have right now is the old lands. Uh, the Egyptian agriculture have some potentials, very good potentials uh, and uh, uh, which uh, we have uh, three cultivation seasons per, per year, and uh, especially in the old lands, not in the new lands. That means we can cultivate the same area three times per year, and th that makes the land intensity factor is uh, 150 uh, percent. Major crops are uh, actually field crops, and uh, we have uh, special attention for uh, uh, cereals. Especially, and we have some. Uh, we 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 are lucky that we have high productivity in in uh, cereals, and this high productivity uh, usually attributed to the the full irrigation system that we are applying because. I'll <laughs> show you. Uh, actually, Egypt is located in the most arid region in the world, which is in, located in North Africa. That means that we have the very low precipitation in, in, in the world, among, uh, among the world. Uh, it's about uh, 150 millimeters per uh, year. This, uh, one, this number is uh, in the northern coast only of the Egypt, not only. After the northern coast, we can estimate the, the, the precipitation, the annual precipitation is less than 14 millimeters per year. Uh, one of the problems that we are suffering now is the heat waves and uh, the, the shortage of uh, winter season. Winter season uh, starts to be more short uh, every year and uh, this is all, uh, have a uh, harmful impact on, on the crop production. Uh, one of the other problems is sandstorms, which is affecting strongly the agriculture sector and uh, causes a lot of damages. Um, uh, the other limiting factor for our agricultural production system in Egypt is, uh, is the water. Water is a big limiting factor because, as you see in the, the map, we only depending on the River Nile. We can't, uh, which is uh, presenting about uh, the total budget of the Egypt is uh, uh, 74 or 75 billion uh, cubic meters every year. And this number actually came from the borders, outside borders of Egypt, which is uh, meaning we have 97% dependency ratio of the out border resources which uh, make our uh, the water uh, 
situation of Egypt very sensitive to any political conflicts or something uh, can happen outside the border. We, can, we don't have a control in our water resources. Um, as I said, the agricultural water uh, use is the highest between the water users in Egypt. We, the agricultural sector consumes about uh, 80, more than 80% of the water resources. And uh, the irrigated area is from 95 to 98% of the total agricultural area. Uh, this is a good and bad point because uh, good because we have the highest productivity because of the whole irrigation for the whole year, but it's bad because we, uh, in case we have any water shortage situation or water scarcity situation, the agriculture sector will be affected very badly. Um, the other problem is uh, about or more than 70% of the agricultural land are depending on surface irrigation, which have the efficiency, application efficiency less than 50%, which is uh, means a lot of water waste and uh, uh, low irrigation efficiency. Uh, right now, the, the water share per capita in Egypt is uh, 600 uh, cubic meter or less. Uh, the, the recent numbers in 2020 are less than 600, and it, it increased to uh, the, the decrease in the, this number is uh, continue to grow every year because of the increase of the population and the, the water resources are constant. So this is increase the, the conflict between the water uh, uh, between the water sharing the sectors, and there is a right now a lot of voices uh, requesting the agriculture sector to reduce the amount of water that we uh, uh, consuming every year. Uh, we have another limited factor. Some of these limited factors are socio-economical uh, related to the, the size of the lands or the land fragmentation. And um, this, is, this image actually shows us uh, a typical image for agriculture uh, uh, ownership in the old lands. Yeah, as we, we can see here, every small square is, is a field. These small squares are less than uh, five Fadan. The Fadan is uh, uh, 420 uh, square meter. So it, it's it's very, very small areas and uh, very scattered and the management is not uh, unified in, in the irrigation so, zone. So it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky in the management and in the improvement on, uh, or applying any, uh, uh, you know, uh, any, any level of high technology. Uh, the problem with these small areas is uh, that occupying um, the majority of all lands and also uh, it's, um, it's uh, representing the poor farmers. And uh, when it's uh, have a lot of pressure in, uh, in uh, the productivity or, uh, or in the inputs of the, the agricultural production, uh, that means the, the income of the farmers are continue to decrease and they continue to suffer from the, the, uh, from the sector. Um, the other adding problem, those were uh, the, the previous points were the actual situation. Right now, we have a lot of projections about what we can face in the future. One of the problems is that the, everyone or the whole world are expecting to face right now is a climate change and also the this area of the north africa is and uh, the mediterranean region is uh, is targeted to a lot of uh, severe impacts due to climate change uh, one of the important impacts of climate change is the increase in temperature and uh, this increase in temperature is uh, was uh, studied in in several studies under several scenarios, climate scenarios and uh, climate models, and all the models uh, support, uh, 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 concluding that uh, we will have a increase at least 
uh, by one degree increase uh, for the, uh, by the middle of the century. And uh, this increase will affect all the whole life, the whole life phases, especially the agricultural sector. Um, also, there is a lot of studies done to see what we, uh, what, uh, how this increase in the temperature can uh, affect the agricultural production. We have a lot of studies uh, studying the, uh, the impact on the productivity and uh, water productivity, and we can see that most of the, the crops are going to uh, face a uh, decrease in the productivity. Actually, in, 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 in significant amounts, it's more than 10% decrease. If, uh, the, for the, the uh, half of the, of the century, and also the water productivity are expected to decrease under all scenario almost. This is an example for the study. Studied uh, a wide variety of uh, crops, and we found that most of the crops will face a, a reduction in water productivity. Uh, also, the um, the problem that um, we have another projections about uh, what can happen in the reference evapotranspiration and uh, the, those studies say that it, we may have an, uh, an increase in the evapotranspiration, potential evapotranspiration by 7 to 60 percent or by the end of the century, which is a huge number actually. Um, what, how we can face our, this situation or what we are doing every day to face this situation. Uh, we have a key question every day we face in our work, which uh, it's about how to irrigate and how much to water to irrigate, when to irrigate, what is a good agriculture practice that uh, farmers can apply to, to, to improve their, their situation. Uh, the Water User Association, how the people can organize themselves to uh, have more uh, uh, or have better management for their irrigation. Uh, the first question, how to irrigate, we have also some studies about what if we change the irrigation system or improve the irrigation system, the efficiency of irrigation system. We, of course, we can see that uh, when we improve the irrigation, surface irrigation efficiency, we will have an increase in crop yield and crop uh, water use efficiency here in this study is about water use efficiency. Uh, uh, some people uh, 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 proposing that we can shift from surface irrigation to uh, sprinkler or drip irrigation. Uh, Theoretically, it can work and give us uh, good uh, results, but practically it has some limitations, especially when we are talking about uh, heavy soils with uh, high sodium content, which, uh, which is uh, the normal case in the old lands in Egypt. So we can't easy, easily to shift from surface irrigation to uh, more modern irrigation systems. Um, so based on this study, we have a lot of work right now in the field about uh, uh, improving irrigation systems. Uh, there is uh, two directions to work with. It's the first one is improving the, the structure of the irrigation network, especially the network inside the fields, and uh, turning it from the earth canals to the more developed or concrete canals. And uh, this uh, movement is uh, uh, taking a wide space uh, and uh, 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 wide support from the government right now in Egypt, and it is it's uh, continue to be applied in in different places, in, especially in the Nile Delta. Uh, the other thing is uh, is the irrigation management. It's a question about irrigation management day by day in the field. How we can irrigate and uh, how much water and uh, when to irrigate. There's a lot of efforts done actually, and uh, it's still under uh, progress right now. One of those efforts are uh, uh, how much water to irrigate uh, by using AT node stations or weather stations. And uh, also there is a, a lot of work done to compare the different methods of calculating it notes the, uh, for uh, agriculture and represented to see which one is much better 
for the uh, applying at the field level. And uh, I know that here in the institution, there's a cooperation between uh, uh, IAS and FAO and Water Research Center in Egypt to modify more accurate methods to, uh, to calculate uh, each mode or having the, the, irrigation man uh, the irrigation water requirements of the crop. Uh, the, other, uh, the other effort is uh, not only working with the, the potential evapotranspiration, uh, there is another method that can work with uh, directly with uh, uh, the crop water requirements of the crop. For example, apply, uh, applying the energy balance methods, different energy balance methods to update the, the, what we know about the crop water requirements and uh, the crop factors to uh, manage better uh, irrigation schedule uh, strategies in, in the future. Um, the other option is applying deficit irrigation and uh, deficit irrigation could be a good answer and efficient answer to, to apply because we don't need to improve the infrastructure uh, which is much cheaper, but uh, uh, also under some uh, certain circumstances of water shortage, we will be forced to apply deficit irrigation. It's not uh, an obligatory situation in this case. So also there's a lot of studies about uh, the impact of using deficit irrigation in different levels. Most of studies uh, used uh, two levels of 80% uh, and 60% from crop uh, evapotranspiration. And some studies studied the, uh, the, the time of apply, applying the deficit irrigation. Some of the studies uh, uh, applied the deficit irrigation for the whole season. And some of the studies just uh, applied it uh, in, uh, in certain growth stages. Uh, not the, for the whole season. And the, most of the studies gave us negative values for water productivity. Of course, we can face some uh, crop, uh, reduction in crop yield, but uh, when it compared to the, the applied water, if, of course, it, it, it improves the water productivity by significant ways, uh, actually. Also, some studies started this, uh, this uh, uh, application as an adaptation option for the future. If what if we have uh, 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 water scarcity and what if we need to 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 reduce the water in, in the agriculture sector. So it, it was studied. And we find we can see that also by the middle of the century, it, it improved the water productivity by 10 percent to 18 or 17 percent. In, in the most of cases. Uh, this, those studies are based on modeling uh, analysis uh, and using uh, different crop models like uh, DSAT and uh, AquaCrop. And uh, those studies still need a lot of uh, 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 evaluation, field evaluation, uh, because we, we need to see that the real application of the deficit irrigation on, on in the land. And one of the problems that uh, uh, makes uh, the applying deficit irrigation uh, uh, a little bit tricky for the farmers that uh, when they have the uh, uh, surface irrigation systems and we when they don't have a, a, um, an improved irrigation funds because they don't have a, a, a way to measure the water that they apply to the field. So improving uh, irrigation canals uh, come, can be uh, improve the application of deficit irrigation and encourage more people to apply it uh, on the field. When we apply deficit irrigation, or uh, we need to be sure about the strategy, about uh, some very important questions uh, to, uh, before applying it. Uh, it. Uh, the first question about uh, crop water requirements and the actual water use of the, the of the crop to to decide how much water can we cut from this amount, and the other one is the water stress thresholds of the of the crop. Uh, 
we we have to see what is for each probe for each variety we ha we need to know what is the threshold of water stress and uh, we can design our strategy to co uh, cope with this uh, to cope with these thresholds um, we can apply this I will answer this question by applying the, the, uh, the techniques of and the tools of precision irrigation management. Uh, and it is, uh, could be like plant-based sensing or remote sensing. It, 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 we can apply both of them. Plant-based sensing is more accurate, more efficient, but it's more expensive and it's a point source because it's a, it means that I have to attach sensors for some place and uh, the data will re represent this place and that it's, it's not easy to normalize data for the wider uh, spatial region but uh, for remote sensing it gave us uh, more uh, 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 wider domain to apply the, the results uh, can the remote sensing also can use thermal infrared uh, or multispectral imagery both of them can give us good impressions. But uh, thermo, uh, thermal uh, measuring is, um, is more preferred in the applying water stress because it can give us an indication about uh, what's uh, going on at the, at the field right now without uh, seeing the, 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 the visual effects of uh, or the uh, the symptoms of water stress on the on the plant. So we can just adjust our management strategy before we have uh, an irreversible damages of the plants because of extreme water stress. It's depending on the the, the relationship between stomatal conductance and uh, the the evapotranspiration, which is uh, affecting the canopy temperature of the plant. And uh, there is a lot of crop stress index actually, but basically it's based on two, two, two methods. One is the empirical method that uh, trying to uh, make a relationship between the canopy temperature and the, the difference between canopy temperature and air temperature and uh, uh, some other uh, climatic factors, especially vapor pressure deficit or uh, uh, net radiation or wind speed. Uh, but it's it's uh, in uh, uh, ETO uh, et al, al, uh, 1981, it's designed it's, uh, it's his famous crop water stress index to be uh, calculated from this re relationship with the uh, air uh, vapor pressure deficit. Uh, also, there is another theoretical method to calculate the probe water stress index uh, based on the energy balance equations. This is a little bit more complicated in evaluation and uh, in calculation, but uh, it should be more accurate and it doesn't um, need uh, some uh, field uh, 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 artificial or comparison between fall uh, irrigation and water stress case. Um, thermal imaging are usually long uh, working with uh, low, the wavelengths of uh, eight uh, uh, micrometer to 14 micrometer. And uh, those images, uh, as I said before, are, have this uh, uh, advantage of uh, assessing the water stress before it have uh, a permanent uh, damage on the plants. Uh, we can use the thermal imaging from different sources. Uh, one of the sources are satellite images. If we are talking about a uh, huge spatial zone or larger irrigation shed, and uh, there is another technology is uh, airborne images uh, with uh, using drones uh, or an, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, and also we have another uh, uh, unattached sensors like cameras AR, ir cameras 
and we have recently some uh, cameras that can be attached to the mobile phones, which is uh, very practical. It's less accurate, but very practical. Of course, uh, the application from the drones is much efficient, and there is a lot of work about this uh, using UAV the application in, in uh, calculating water stress and estimating water stress, uh, but it's not legal in all countries. Some countries are not allowing to use drones right now. Uh, one of uh, the tricky things of uh, using thermal images is uh, the analysis of the images and how to extract the temperature of the canopies. And we have different methods we can apply, like, uh, for example, the co-registration method between visible image and uh, thermal images. And uh, uh, <clears throat> also we have the histogram based approach, which is uh, just to give us uh, the three shots of each pixels group uh, in, in, in our image, and we can extract the needed pixel based on this, uh, in this uh, three shots. Uh, also, we have recently the application of deep learning uh, by using, for example, neural networks. And uh, uh, neural networks uh, show us uh, very good uh, uh, performance in uh, image classification and segmentation. So uh, recently, the people started, uh, the researchers started to uh, use it to uh, see how they can use under uh, agriculture applications. For example, this is an example uh, to, to extract the canopy area or uh, canopy cover from uh, an invisible image using machine learning and neural network. Uh, our current study, as Elena presented, is about uh, in improving the deficit irrigation by using thermal imaging and machine learning. Uh, the goal of this work uh, actually is uh, also the, uh, the goal is uh, the improved crop water productivity of uh, some food crops at some uh, at the field level by managing deficit irrigation in a smart and efficient way and also with low cost because we are thinking about applying a method uh, to estimate the water stress of the plants. Uh, to, that can be used by anyone, not only by scientists, not, uh, the, and the, it's not costly like uh, uh, the cost of uh, attaching scientific sensors in the land and which it need a lot of maintenance and uh, can be very expensive and uh, need a, a, a certain level of experience to can work with. Uh, this research is focusing on using the camera, uh, the uh, IR camera attached with the mobile. And uh, this the research and the data was in cooperation with the uh, work with, uh, of course, uh, I'm working with Bernie and we, we have a collaboration with uh, Elena. Elena was very generous with, She's very generous, very generous. <laughs> and she offered uh, us, uh, collaborated with us to collect the data from sorghum uh, uh, experiment. Uh, and this experiment have uh, two tillage uh, treatments, uh, which is uh, no tillage and using conventional tillage uh, application. And we apply two uh, irrigation uh, treatments. One is a full irrigation system, which uh, take part on, on the, this uh, area of uh, the experiment uh, plot and deficit irrigation here. Deficit irrigation levels were ranged uh, between 60 and 70 and changing uh, uh, according to the growth uh, stages. And we have three re replicates. Each replicate have uh, two plots like that. And the imaging uh, were done uh, at five times per day at uh, our 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 uh, uh, hour. And it's uh, the, actually started, uh, the, um, the imaging campaign starting, uh, started at 17 July, and uh, we finished at 21 because uh, the probe is fully mature. 
the, the data from the images, thermal data from the images are uh, also calibrated by uh, climatic data. So we have uh, five stations, uh, five points of uh, measurements. Each point have the thermal uh, sensor. Uh, it's uh, measuring for 24 hours per day. It's each, uh, uh, each 30 minutes. And uh, have another, uh, there is another sensor for estimating uh, uh, solar radiation, wind speed, uh, uh, air temperature, uh, and humidity. Uh, also, another measurement we're taking to measure uh, the stomata conductance uh, of the plants in different, uh, in two stages, probe stages. And uh, also, some uh, data were collected for uh, cal uh, calculating the uh, uh, leaf area index of the of the plants. Uh, right now, the product we have from the the camera is uh, for each image is uh, three files. Each file have different group data or a, a different usage. Uh, first one is the TIF uh, file, which is, uh, includes a layer of, uh, of the thermal data. The other uh, two ones are uh, just, uh, this one is a visible one, and this one is the image, the thermal image, but uh, not including the temperature data. This is the, the product from the images. And the uh, first step is, uh, is uh, separating the canopy temperature data from the images. So we are trying different methods, starting from histogram method, for example, and we are applying um, uh, some machine learning algorithm to extract the data. The work is still in progress, and uh, right now uh, we have an accuracy of about 6% uh, uh, in, in, in for the images, and it's still under progress to improve this accuracy. Um, also, there's uh, some, here's some indicators from the data because we just uh, warming up in, in the data analysis. So we have, for example, here the comparison between uh, two, two types of cameras. For example, we tried uh, to compare the six thermal camera that we used in, the, in all uh, measurements with a flare camera, which is much better, have more advanced uh, characteristics uh, or specifications. And uh, we can compare to both cameras with uh, the earth, with the temperature uh, collected from the sensors. And we can see here, we don't have such big one, uh, except that uh, the temperature from the extracted from the camera will give us more accurate canopy data because the sensor may collect some points from soil plus a crop. So it can be a little bit different than the thermal camera. And also it can uh, give us more uh, utilities and more uh, advantages in, 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 the, in the analysis and uh, providing a tool to, to extract more accurate crop water uh, stress index. Here is an example for the pre-assessment of the data. For example, here is uh, the uh, canopy temperature extracted from the thermal images calibrated with a PPT, uh, a vapor pressure deficit. And uh, also we have a pre-calculations for crop water stress index with, uh, calibrated with a PPT. And we are still uh, improving the analysis method to see which uh, method uh, or which uh, how we can improve it and make it more practical to the farmers uh, or the or the irrigation advisors uh, and uh, to give them a, a, a final product of uh, information uh, or, or or a tool final product which is can help them to uh, manage deficit irrigation. Uh, finally, I would like to thank you for your patience, and I would like to thank uh, Elena, uh, Bernie for their support, for their help, and uh, I hope we can 
have uh, some uh, good product at the end of the this uh, of the end of the data labs. Thank you very much, and uh, I the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.